is Catherine Lynch. I'm an assistant professor of emergency medicine and surgery here at Duke, and I work in the Department of Emergency Medicine clinically, as well as research on injury prevention. So injury is an epidemic. It kills over 5 million people per year, 16,000 deaths per day. Um, it leads to a large burden of disease, specifically amongst men, who are the economically productive age group from 18 to 35, 18 to 40. Low and middle income countries have an increased risk of injury. They have worse disease, they have a higher burden of injury. So over 90% of all the disability due to road traffic injuries occurring in low and middle income countries. Over 80% of the deaths from road traffic injury are happening in these countries as well. Even once the road traffic injury happens itself, um, the difficulty then is then access to care. So there's no pre-hospital system, there's no pre-hospital medicine that occurs in most of these locations. Um, and then once you get to the hospital, there's limitations in care, limitations in the capacity of care, limitations in the resource and availability to, to treat trauma patients. Um, so low and middle income countries sort of have a burden all the way from the prevention aspect through the access to care, through the quality care, and then rehabilitation resources are also limited or non-existent in some locations. The reason why this burden is so high is because of an increase of motorization, an increase of urbanization in the setting of economic development. And all of this in the setting where there's not a lot of public health infrastructure. There's very limited regulations on speed, on alcohol. There's very poor prevention methodology. There's no restrictions or, or requirements for seatbelts or helmets. Some industries in the United States have been able to create cars that really protect people, but in low and income countries, this is not common. They're not accessible. These safety uh, measures are not really well adopted. The first step in addressing the problem is going to be really understanding how much more of a burden is actually there than we know about. We don't know the extent of the problem, to be honest. While we do know the deaths, and we think that's underreported, we don't know the patients who never come to the hospital. We don't know those who end up having serious chronic pain or have inability or disabilities that lead them not to be able to work. We don't know the economic impact on families and communities because of this large burden of injury. We're working with um, collaborators in Rwanda and Sri Lanka currently um, on a project for road traffic injury. As we do this project, we're going to be able to identify hotspots of injury um, and then hopefully be able to tailor an intervention for those locations to be able to decrease injury at those locations, as well as to further define what things in the environment increase your risk for road traffic injury. So we are working with local universities, we're working with governments, we're working with police and police data to be able to understand what injuries are. We're not just staying in the hospital, we're stepping outside of the hospital into the community to be able to work with others, both pre-hospitally, hospital-based, and government. We've created a, a great group of multidisciplinary workers here uh, at Duke. We've created a global injury research collaboration. The goal of the collaboration is to talk about injury to talk about research, to bring people together who don't normally work together. So we have collaborators from around the world who join us from Argentina, from Brazil, Sri Lanka, Rwanda and Tanzania. We have people who are on the medical field, the medical professionals. We have statisticians and epidemiologists. We work with many non-medical people, biomedical engineers, as well as economics people to be able to understand really what this whole spectrum of injury burden is and how we sort of address it. We have a great opportunity to make a difference right now because the WHO, the World Health Organization, has stated that this is the decade for road traffic safety and injury prevention. So we need to capitalize on this opportunity and do the best we can to increase both research and funding sources and interest in this area.